And welcome back to Inside the Vault. As you may know, before working in television, I played a little football for the Cincinnati Bengals, and the debate has always been NASCAR drivers. Are they athletes? Are they not? And we have Angus McKenzie here who is going to uh, end the debate. Once and for all, are these guys really athletes, and how hard is it to drive in NASCAR? Well, you know, back in the day when stock car racing started, it was a bunch of amateurs just having a good time on weekends. You know, some of them were even moonshiners looking for something else to do with their hopped-up jalopies rather than when they were sober. the cops. Right, yeah, yeah I understand, <laughs> right. But, you know, NASCAR today is big, big business. It's not just a sport, it's a major entertainment industry as well, and there's an awful lot at stake. The, the point is the cars now are so equal on equal terms that, you know, it's not just talent anymore. You really need to be on top of your game all the way through. And that's why, you know, top NASCAR drivers like Jimmy Johnson really do take their personal fitness very, very seriously. All right. How much of it is for looks? We were talking about this earlier. Now these guys, like I said, they're public figures. They're stars. They're out of the car walking around. How much of the workout is, I got to look good because I'm going to be on a poster? I don't think it is. You know, these guys care about racing. Top racers, that's all they care about. You know, I've known Formula One champions who, when they got out of a car winning a race, red-faced and sweaty, the first thing they did was light up a cigarette. They didn't care. You know, all they care about is racing. And if being fit gives them the race's edge, they'll do whatever it takes to be fit. Well, I think, too, your mental, I mean, you have to be so focused for Absolutely. such a long period of time. And it's really intense in that, you know, car. Let's face it, if you mentally make a mistake, it's not like, you know, you're going to lose a game. You could be dead at the end of exactly. this thing. Absolutely. You know, you really have to concentrate. Just the, the sheer power of concentration. If you look at some of these drivers on the start line before the race, you know, they don't blink. They could be there for a minute waiting, waiting for that flag to go. They're they, they in the zone. They're ready to go. And that, you know, just that mental activity takes everything out of you. My friend Justin Bell won a world championship driving sports cars, so I thought it'd be interesting to get his take on what it takes to be a racing driver. Hello, I'm Justin Bell, and I'm here at the Peterson Automotive Museum. So, are racing drivers really athletes? After all, the car does all the work, doesn't it? All the driver has to do is drive and occasionally turn left. It can't be that hard. Not that long ago, most racing drivers, even at the highest levels of motorsport, were part-timers. They raced whatever they could, whenever they could, and in between, they held down jobs or ran businesses just to pay the bills and, of course, keep on racing. And racing was really dangerous with the minimal of safety equipment, and crashes were often fatal. They did it for the thrill of the ride and the sweet taste of victory. Today, however, racing is a big business. At the top level, it's a billion dollar enterprise with a global market. The risks are still high, but the rewards are absolutely huge. Because the performance level of a car is so high these days, and the difference between winning or losing is so slim, the drivers themselves have had to become extraordinary athletes. In Formula One, for example, the drivers are enduring loads of in excess of four or five G under braking and through corners. And then in NASCAR, they're going up to 200 miles an hour for four hours at a time with cockpit temperatures of 125 degrees. Racing cars has always been about stamina, concentration, fast reactions, and of course, pure talent. I doubt whether any modern day Formula One or NASCAR driver could actually run 100 yards in 10 seconds, but they are athletes with a unique skill set. Today's modern racing drivers are really part marathon runner and part jet fighter pilot. And like any great athlete, they hate to lose. I used to love that when they had to run to the car in the beginning. Those guys are probably in that day. Ah! Ah! But now these guys are like hot guys. Yeah, they that's the thing is I, I feel like uh, it's, it's a sexy job because the speed at which you do it and it's, and it's dangerous. And that's just, you know. Women like that. Women like that dangerous guys. They There's do. also another reason why they're all tend to be fairly compact guys. You know, there's not a lot of room in a Formula One car. They don't make them extra wide. So all Formula One drivers tend to be, you know, under six foot and skinny guys simply to fit in the cars these days. Let me ask you a question. How much has the safety associated with NASCAR, Formula One, whatever, translated to the cars that we drive? 
Well, quite a bit. I mean, things like traction control and anti-lock braking were experimented with in Formula One. But what's happened now is that they made the regulations away from road car, uh, road car improvements to keep the spectacle what it is. Because, you know, a NASCAR these days isn't anything like uh, the cars we drive the, on the street anymore. You know, they're totally different. It's all about the show now. And even in Formula One, which is about technology, again, it's all about putting on the best possible show for the spectators. They want close racing. They don't necessarily want to see technical excellence where one guy disappears into the distance. But they're not going to go to the little tiny seats where you have to be under six feet tall. Because I still like driving. I don't want to be in there like this. I'm with you, you know. on that. I mean, seriously, <laughs> can, we, can we make cars now for American men? You know, people who are designing interiors are really thinking about how uh, humans are changing. Everyone's getting bigger and taller. It's happening in, as nutrition changes. So cars will be getting bigger on the inside. The trick is to try and make them smaller on the outside at the same time. Well, we're back inside the vault right after this. These keys open doors to opportunity, build communities, and know how to have a good time. It's Chevy Truck Month. Get your keys. Qualified buyers get 0% APR financing for 72 months on all 2011 Silverado half-ton models. Grab yours today. Well, for Jill and Alonzo, two of the great athletes that I know, and all our guests, thank you very much for watching Inside the Vault. For more of what you just saw today, go to InsideTheVault.tv. I'm Chris Collinsworth. See you next time.